Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Equestria War in which we are playing as, not Equestria, but the Lunar Empire which I spent quite a bit of time trying to figure out how to get but that's okay because we have the second Imperial Army. If the Empress is to exert her indomitable will, she requires a grand army, one to match the legion she raised against the tyranny of the sun over a thousand years ago. It is to be distinct and loyal to the Empress and her ideals and entirely separate from the stagnant past. Long live the night! And we have Nightmare Moon, the Empress of the Night, gives us more political power, better just by Wargo's times. And the AI focuses way more on, on offense, so. If you like about her, please go ahead and thank you, Scroop, for making the portrait. So, apparently, I think this is old content, but you know what? That's okay with me. I've never played this, so this is new content to me. So, hopefully we do okay. Um, before we begin, there's us, of course, 52 divisions in total. Equestria has a certain amount, and they have... Oh. Uh, they broke free. Oh! We have New Maryland on our side, too. They're our puppet jet set. Also, I did go with um, a historical, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. The fate of New Maryland, as the ponies of New Maryland have been seen reason, and decided to submit to us now. We need to decide how to handle our new subjects. Jet said, who was his a support of harmony, could be kept in power and given a chance to prove his loyalty. Now to the moon instead of the sun. The well, Shadow Bolt Society could also be put in charge. They're an ancient secret society that many of the powerful ponies who claim that they were founded by Lunarists during the first rise of Nightmare Moon. Final option setting a loyal Thestral from our ranks to rule the colony, though, was it upset the locals and it might have unintended consequences? Who should we put in charge of New Maryland? Harmonist sympathies. Just to prove his loyalty. Should rule well. Can't trust some set of bat pony? The Shadow Bolt Society. Um Let him prove his loyalty. I wanna see what happens, because I have no idea what's gonna happen, so. Um It's not gonna be an easy war, is it? They, oh, they creep south. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, it looks like overall we're not doing that great, so we should. Uh, we still want to push in the south a little bit as much as possible. Oh. Sure. Celestial State. War of the Two Sisters. Well, alone in the dark for the Empress. Are they even my puppets? Disruptive monarchy. Communications. Going to let's, well, that really hurt us there. Oh, crap. The Workers Republic of Baltimore and all these people, too. When the Civil War began, Baltimore was taken by the spores of the Nightmare Moon. However, the trade unions and socialists of the city rose up, banished soldiers of Nightmare Moon from the region, and proclaimed the Workers Republic of Baltimore. Now, the question stands will the newborn state or nation live long enough through the Civil War while end any other attempts of self government during such conflicts, when one of the major forces prevails over the other? I want to join the spirit of the revolution. Ah, deep in the jungle, the mighty jungle. In the Forbidden Jungle, a band of mercenaries working for the infamous Dr. Kabbalaron have seized control of the ancient ruined city of Tenochtitlan and surrounded lands. They have declared themselves to be their own private nation outside of Equestria's control. The Nightmare Moon supporters. Shortly after the outbreak of war, Lunars occupied the entire southeastern peninsula. However, Baltimore, Celestial State, and Aslan Free State were able to successfully push back Lunar Army regiments, who were scattered into the jungles. They eventually were organized under the commander of Star's Rural, who was continuing the war in the south against those who could disrupt the Lunar Empire's claim of the region. It's a celestial state. After the beginning of the Civil War, which we should probably stop attacking since we don't have to fight into the south anymore. Um, I want you all to hold. And you guys help. You guys are going to be the main ones who we're going to attack with. So, But, um, many of the opponents were not delighted by this course of events. Organizations took up arms and began their struggle against the darkness. One such formation was a so-called celestial state led by Daring Doe, who was thought to be a fictional character. Celestia? So. This is not going to be easy, is it? I heard it wasn't going to be easy. We're in the south, but we're not fighting them, right? Yeah, no. Um, they are fighting each other, which actually sounds like a lot of fun, too. So. Rarity captured. Another piece of good news. Of course, this successfully uh, apprehended Rarity during the Man main hand uprising. She's been visiting to help manage her clothing brand and market this season like season's line of fashion, but was unable to escape after the night prevailed. While well, Rarity is one of the six wielders of the elements of harmony, celestial loyalists are deprived of their most powerful weapon. This war shall be won through the clash of armies and industrial might, not of magical artifacts. No more uh, rainbow lasers. Also, here are the national spirits of War Two Sisters. Celestial resistance, which sucks. We have hidden supply depots, which is not bad. Uh, confused workers, as well as partial festival readiness. And actually, did I even do any of this stuff here? No, no, that sucks. Alright, so they're still trying to get accustomed to the entire line here. We gotta think about supplies as well. I mean, they have enough divisions to really do well against this. Oh god, not here. 
Oh, good God. That's so bad. Oh, Jesus. Oh, we do have air superiority. Why can't we win, though? We can pierce some. Confederation of the South States. Confederation of the South, the Western States declared its independence in the midst of the chaos of the war. The seas control the whole Western Southwest. These chairs are distancing themselves from the Celestia and the previous Western leaders. Darn it. Oh, whoops. Oh, okay. I love a Confederate South. Oh my goodness, is this really Confederate South? I've seen it before, but... Columbia Party? <laughs> so oh god, yeah, I think I gotta play this group too. Oh, there's so much in the question war. The Jets have just done an amazing job. No opponent wants to put his rotten state. And now they're attacking Sioux, the 18 karat run of bad luck, Van Hoover Commune. Swear by the Stallion Grand Republic, Commune's in Van Hoover. I've risen up to seize control of the city, proclaiming Van Hoover Commune. Led by the now former Admiral of the Equestrian Navy, Dust Hoover, and claimed to challenge the current conflict. Or at least it makes him weaker, too. An aging carrot run of bad luck. A hazard and knock, Nightmare Moon's chamber door. A group of bureaucrats nervously enter. Looking very stressed and tired. What's the problem? She asks, looking at the ponies from her current reports in the newspapers. The ponies seem to reel back at a question. We're sorry, Princess. We have urgent news. One of the ponies was shoved forward, holding a letter. Nightmare Moon took it, ripping the envelope open with one swift motion. Her face fell, and every pony in the room cowered. It was a letter from the mayor of Las Pegasus. They claimed that they were completely independent from the Civil War, and no intention of joining either side. Las Pegasus. And you know what? I'm okay with that. I'm totally okay with that. Rokinhar. Does every single one of these nations have a unique focus tree? That is awesome. That is, God. That is just straight awesome. Also, if I can't win this fairly, I will be doing some funky stuff here too, so just let you know. At this point in my Hoi Four career, I will be doing whatever needs to be done to <laughs> win the war. But even as we secure our newly formed lunar fleet, our naval command was not yet organized. This allowed for Admiral Dust Hoover to come right under our noses and steal a uh, new fleet from us. Hundreds of sailors have fled with some of our ships to the communist heck hole. We need to recoup and just hope that no large power tries to invade our coasts. Once we secure the core of a question, the scum and Van Hoover will be hung for the crimes of treason and the population will learn to fear the Empress of the Night. The traitor must be hung. Okay, so we don't have to be down here either, which is good. Oh, this is not good, is it? The biggest thing about Equestria is that I remember you got it making circumference, man. Second Imperial Army. Um, all the little ponies. Manpower were fine with. Plug part be nice. Equipment, though. Oh my goodness. We definitely need that equipment. Um, grenades, guns, and uniforms. Equestria is large and yet sparse populated outside of major minor settlements. Here in the countryside, there's a little traffic or various caches equipment stashed by Empress's most loyal festivals. Exact locations of material must be uncovered to replenish our stockpiles followed up with. Uh, we can do that one too, which would be something pretty good. More war possibility we get though. Uh, Carol Terran training manuals. Even though the uprising is still in its early stages, the Empress's most loyal legionnaires have arrived from Zeprica and are appalled at our officers' core state. They have demanded the privileges of instructing all our commanders in the ways of modern war so that our officers may be superior to the solarists. What are the couches like? 5,000 versus 5,000? That's not very good at all. Alright, so since they're attacking here, we're going to attack here. Is that a supply point? Yes, it is. We need that supply point immediately. They want to go in? So be it. Oh, crap. Oh, we did okay-ish. We need some fuel, though. Just a little bit here. Nice. Go down there. Go right here. Good god, they're attacking like crazies. If you need to back out, that's fine. Uh, yeah. That's good. Actually, I'd have no one to spare. Why don't you go right here? Crap, I could have gone right there. You all hold. Um, you go right here. Take supply away. Come back up here. 
do you go right here? Are you kidding me, bro? Go in here. Help him out. That's good. Grab some of that too. And what's next? War of Equ Equus. Um, that's okay. Well, that definitely helped out just a little bit first. All the little ponies. The new Equestrian Economy. Chaos of War has been a great calamity for the Equestrian Economy. For it to recover, the Emperor must directly intervene and save our industry before it's too late. The sooner things return to how they were before the struggle, the sooner the opponents accept the rule of the Empress. You gotta win somewhere here, man. Up here, you guys are here too. Get a mountain, that'd be good defense. Is that a river? That should be a river there. Very good defensive position there. Our military stats must really suck. Oh, crap. Are you kidding me? Bro. Now I guess we don't have to be down there. Yeah, go do that, and then take these off. Alright, well, we're pushing down through here. Give us a second to move those guys around. Taking quite a bit of attrition, which is nice. Even with the extra attack, that, this seems very weak. There's, a, there's that division, that's good. Come on, kill it off. Why are we so weak? Are these divisions like, yeah, I guess you're not good? No, you're 40 combo, which is not great, but not bad. <clears throat> come on, come on, come on. Jesus Christ, this is stupid. How are they... Do they get extra defenses? Or something here? Um, nothing there. Stagnation of Harmony, which is still good to see. No? War of Two Sisters, no. No? They don't get anything extra. Which I don't understand. Why are they so strong? I thought we were supposed to get a bonus of attack. Should have hold. Because we got a break right here. We still don't get any supply here because of the god dang piece of the garbage. You gotta win here. You've got to win here. Force it. I don't care what happens. How does the quest get so much equipment? My god. Jesus, that takes way too long. Look at that. Weekly. Oh, that's not bad. That's pretty good. Prospect for resources. Military factories would be good. More stability would be good as well. Um, bread for work. <coughs> Let's do the bread for work program, maybe? No, we can't do any of this stuff until the Civil War is over, is, can we? Yeah, that's... Oh, I don't like that. But, hearts and minds. Our rebellion is one of righteous liberty against anti-thestral tyranny and racism. This message shall be broadcast from the lands uh, from our public relations team. So all the points of equal shall know our aims are utterly pure. Even if they must be learned by force. The last savory aspect of our intentions will be vehemently denied. You cannot lose there. You've got to hold out. There you go. Ooh. It's only four divisions, but my god, trying to kill these four divisions off is a pain in the butt. Actually, get closer. Go to the front lines. It doesn't matter who you're part of. Here, one ground battle plan. I kind of want to go superior firepower. Do we have anyone here that lets us do that? Well, this is a political power silent mule. 5% is not very much. That's much better. Umbra, cult leader. Um, land doctrine. Ground battle plan's not bad either. Let me go with the ground battle plan. Sure, why not? Well, can we at least successfully kill off four divisions in total? 
That is going to be a yes. Ooh, at least we did something there. Get an ambusher. Oh, and a cam. Uh, exterminate the celestial resistance. That'd be good. Send aid to the disciples. Southeastern garrison struggling to maintain control of a strong insurgency. We need to support them before it's too late. Go with that one first, and do that both. Ah, um, Misty Knight entered Lieutenant Silent Peak's tent and stood at attention. <clears throat> he was sitting behind her desk, reading reports of military operations in the sector. Next to the papers were a framed drawing of his daughter. Five minutes, Misty Knight stood, waiting patiently until he finished reading and lifted his gaze. Good, don't interrupt me. Now I'm even more convinced you're the opponent for the task. Missy Knight nodded. What is your command? I read from your background that you received training from fellow disciples before taking part in several arms thefts, as well as ambushes against celestial loyalists. And later you volunteered to join the Lunar Army. I think you'll be capable of fulfilling this task. The Empress has requested me to prepare ponies to escort a shipment of weapons to our fellow soldiers fighting against insurgents in the southeast. You'll lead them and ensure you're not dis discovered by our enemies, you understand? Yes, sir. Good. If this mission is critical, failure would be punished. Do not forget this. I will not, sir. I prefer death over failing my goddess. Death may well be your punishment. Now go and get your equipment. You'll be leaving in an hour. The shipment is ready. He bowed deeply, turning around and left. Silent glanced at the drawing on his desk. I hope I can see her again soon, he mumbled quietly. Hopefully she will succeed. Let's hope so. Fifty-one thousand. That's better. But my god, this is still it's such a mess. But it's our mess. And you know what? With these divisions, we might need to put these divisions like somewhere else. And by somewhere else, I mean like on the front line. So you three go there. I don't need a massive amount of divisions to do hopefully, hopefully do well because we'll make it a lot of small segments probably we're still losing in some areas but honestly it's gotten better hopefully so hearts and minds all the little ponies the ongoing confusion just right becomes more crucial to secure numerical advantage when it matters most most ponies make take a dim view on certain dying for a distant overlord but with enough benefits many could be convinced otherwise the current debt is relevant if we prevail in the end and i absolutely agree now this is a division i want to use royal guards are okay they're royal Garrison regiments are okay. National Guard divisions are okay. Uh, we'll go make our boys thick. Or ponies thick. Actually, these are infantry. Why are these not ponies? Eighteen combat with, so we don't have well, we'll never have enough guns. Whatever. And go there there. Uh, actually, right there. You should be able to win pretty easily. Everyone's killing each other. Nothing like everyone killing each other. Nothing like it. They just keep attacking. I thought I was supposed to be focusing on offense. Was I not? Save the guns just a little bit. Um, you need to claim millennia, huh? Oh, we're gonna lose it, aren't we? That sucks. Well, that, the goal is just to make as many small systems as possible. Changes to millennia. Words reach us so that the changes officially declared war against millennia. After months of buildup, <clears throat> changing forces march across the border where they've already begun to clash with the first line of millennia defenses. However. Heavy casualties are being reported, and it seems like the situation in Eleni is about to become a bloodbath. While we're not exactly sure on the reasons for war, one thing is for certain, Eleni is in dire straits. Any offers of diplomatic intermediation from a third party have been bluntly rejected by the Queen Chrysalis. She says, This is a dispute between Eleni and the Changing Lands, and will be resolved shortly. Thus, intervention from other countries is unnecessary. <coughs> Excuse me. We are unable to stop the outbreak of war, and need to decide what to do. We either issue an official protest condemning either side for causing hostilities, or simply say nothing and say out of the matter. Surely, once the changes are done with the Lenium, they'll demobilize their army and remain content with what they have. Totally. <coughs> Diplomatic protest. Neutral, the War Masters of Equus. The new Lunar Army at present functions more as a horde than a stratified command structure. It's proven itself effective, but that is due to the troops' valor and devotion, not the efficiency of our leadership. So, the advice of our. Uh, Chiro Terran friends, the Empress has decided to appoint an Imperial War Master to lead the armies in her stead. Alright, so with that done, they refuse to yield, which is good for them. Um, we're going to come back down here, maybe. Uh, we need the supply points. I mean, that's the biggest thing right now. Supply, supply, supply. And this looks like supply would be king. Actually, they don't get supply because this is cut off. Well, most of it's cut off. So the goal is to take supply point in the north. Um, but I still want to make an encirclement, so... Something like that, maybe. Everyone else will just have to hold. Hello, excuse me, you're in mountains. You should be dying. We are not doing well on this front at all. How are they so ungodly strong? I don't understand sometimes, man. I'm going in. Take you two off. Go there. Go there. Should be able to do that pretty easily. But I've been wrong before. 
Force it. Oh my god. They just they just have so many divisions. It's not even fair. Thank god. Push through here. Lunar Volunteers. On a field used for playing a buckall. Buckball and peace time, large crowds gathered, huddled together in the evening, cold, even, cold evening rain. Most of them were Thestrals, but among them were Earth Ponies, Pegasi, and Unicorns. All of them had a weapon of some sort, a pistol, a rifle, something crude like a musket, or even a pitchfork. The chatter among them stopped when a Bat Pony officer appeared and shouted attention. Out of all the ponies on the field, it was the only one wearing a shiny new uniform. His duty was that uh, now of an officer. And organized his rival to a proper fighting unit. Disciples of the Night, I am Lieutenant Silent Peaks. We have all come here to fight for equality between the four tribes for the emancipation of the Thestral race and for the defense of our families against reprisals from Solarists. And it is a noble cause indeed, but a noble cause is not enough to make you good fighters. So while you will be drilled, and I will turn you donkeys into a battalion worthy of our Empress. Discipline is needed if we wish to be victorious in this war, and dis discipline requires harshness. Think twice if you're ready for it, and for the horrors of battle, if not, then stop wasting my time and get out of my sight. The rest of you step forth. <clears throat> we have prepared proper equipment for you, and lodgings for rest. Tomorrow, the training will start. My task is preparing you for the front line as quickly as possible. It won't be easy for any of us, but by the end of it, we will resemble soldiers instead of angry peasants. Speaking of which, drop those darn fish forks and give me actual weapons, you maggots. Perhaps a skill will match your eagerness. Shadow Legacy boots. Blood upon the gladiator. Mass mechanization. I like that. Standardization equipment. We need that one. Capture firearms, pair on the heirlooms, and strange weapons from distant lands. Seems that the lunar army is more types of rifles than soldiers. The gunsmiths and quartersmiths are becoming overwhelmed with requests, and it falls upon the state to iron out these problems. Situation beckoned itself. One approved rifle designed for every, every pony to use, and easily replaceable and maintainable. Position of War Master. Now, the Civil War consumes the question. It's been decreed by the Empress that the Imperial Army must fight as one. We're no longer ragtag groups of supporters fighting the guerrilla tactics. We must be a single unit of force on the recommendation of our advisors from Cherop Terra. We should call a conclave of most experienced commanders to appoint a War Master for the Army. This War Master will be in charge of determining the nation's doctrines and craft our warfare style of their will. So as the conclave drags on, four plans will come on top. First is Marshal Spec. Spec is through the most conventional military training out of the four candidates and favors warfare similar to the fledging Equestrian Army, which planning and logistics being essential for its conduct. Second is Selenite. An extremely young officer, but fanatically loyal, Selenite has stated that the lives of the Lunar Faithful are too valuable for the war tactics of old to be used. She suggests we take a full advantage of the full wonders, new wonders of the modern weaponry and refine into a storm of iron and gunpowder. She argues her strategies to save lives are more effective in the modern era. Third is General Tempest Wind. Much like Selenite, Wind's doctrine is rooted in the reality of modern war, but approaches it from a different direction. Tempest says that the weapon that shall, that shall win the wars of the second millennium is the tank. After studying both the Stallion Gradient and changing militaries, she stated that her heresy aside, her ideas on their ideas on war are worth adopting as her own. Last comes Midnight Oil. He bluntly declares that the Empire has two sources, resources that can use it to emerge victoriously. It's a large supply of opponent power, and it's near unrivaled industrial capacity. It's combined this with his own theories about the nature of warfare regarding large front operations. Some calls the doctrines barbaric. He calls them effective. Grand battle plan. Spec is the way we go for, for now. Uh, support equipment. Artillery. Artillery modernization. What ordinance could scrounge up is either woefully outdated or simply, simply inefficient in its mount. The Empress finds it inexcusable to be lacking in big guns to grant our enemies in the dust. While there are enough existing models for experimentation, additional funding and pony powers needed to hasten the process. Also, what's the focus speed like for Equestria? Uh, is it still the same? I guess it is still the same. After the war's over, so. But right now we're in the north here. I mean, we're just trying to circle more units. That's all we're literally trying to do right now. And circle and destroy. Come on, come on, come on. Get that tank in there. Ooh, another bonus. Yes. More organization defense. Yes, please. More reinforce rate. Yes, please. And coordination. Yes. That's going to take a while to do that. Yeah, we're looking pretty weak in the north here, but it's only because I converted a lot of divisions. No, I, I threw an artillery on all those divisions, too. Yeah, no one can take a break here yet. No one has earned a break yet. Come on, break them, break them, break them. And now, they're completely surrounded. And they'll die here very quickly, hopefully. The name of the game is just straight encirclements. Because they're still up to 78. Come on. Good. And, is this mountain? It's probably mountain tiles, isn't it? Ah, uh, we can't tell. Yeah, it is mountain tiles. No wonder it's taking forever. Now they can go wherever they need to go. And the center is falling a little bit, which is not good. Which means we gotta make another encirclement around here. We're going to Bales. Um, we're gonna go like right here. This center has been a big issue for us. So you guys come down there. The other infantry will be going around there to do whatever they need to do. And we got a little more command power, which is nice. Anti-Monarchist Rally in Baltimore. These are spreading uh, to us about 
Ah, peculiar event in Baltimore. As sports of Celestia and Luna both flee the city in terror. <clears throat> well, after the city organized a large event dedicated entirely to discredit the institution of monarchy, to mock the princesses, and to beat up those opponents who remain loyal to them. Graffiti are an obese Celestia gorging on cake decorated walls, and Luna was referred to as a lunatic. Any monuments depicting the princesses were toppled in the face. The most curious example was this uh, theatrical execution in the following demolition of the large statue of Princess Celestia standing in the central square of Baltimore. They've gone astray, but this gave us more war support, you know? Nice. Specialized squad training. <coughs> One point cannot be expected to handle everything. Thus, we have the delegation of tasks. While most will serve in a direct combat role, others are required for less glorious but not less but not less important duties, such as digging trenches, building bridges, and maintaining communication and supply lines. Lives of many will depend on these diligent few. Yeah, I don't know. What was it like the U.S. Army? Like, I forget for like logistics. A lot of them. A lot of the soldiers just based on logistics and making sure that you know soldiers are not cut off guard and stuff like that. So. I could be wrong, but like, yeah, logistics, you are just like all the not direct combat roles are super important in any military conflict. Good, we got bales. You go here immediately, because now you're gonna go here, and you're gonna actually do that too. Well, would you look at that? Beautiful. As long as we don't get encircled, god dang it! You better hurry the heck up. No, they don't want to save their ponies. Okay. Go on, go in here too, just in case. Nice. Sure, speed. We're just making military factories at this point, you know. Can you do anything? Oh, you can. That's good. Good, good. Come on, come on, good. Now we have supply through here, which is awesome. Good for army XP too. Actually, what do you guys require? Guns and support equipment. Okay. I'm glad there's nothing else super unique about them. Exterminate them? Yeah. Enact war plan. As we find ourselves drawn to war, we'll be prudent to enact a set of war measures to make sure we can weather the storm. Other luxuries and frivolities will have to be sacrificed for the success of the war effort. Imperial war plan. More, uh, get more population. Better consumer goods. Weekly stability and weekly war support goes down, though. Oh, that's not bad, actually. It's actually pretty good. Hey, not bad. And we are still faltering down here, which sucks. Oh my god. <sighs> Supplies are just so god awful down here. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go for Summerdale. We're like this and like that. This is god awful as well. Oh goodness. Should have supplies slightly here, but Jesus Christ, it's so bad down here. Get down there, get down there, get down there. Oh, Veva front. Go strip for there. Take two off. Go there. Take one off. Go there. And take one off. Go there, too. Force the attack. Go through. Go in. Oh, we're out of manpower, too. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, we'll need to go. We're on volunteer only. Holy crap. I did grab my Midnight Storm as well, so. Nice. Good stuff. If they want to do that, it's up to them, but still. Should be able to win there. Should. Yeah, we gotta get more manpower. Pony power, just in case. Just in case. <clears throat> oh, wait, what? What? No, okay, we can't do that. There's literally no way we can do that, so... I'm gonna do some funky stuff off screen, because that's not fair. Of course, I think when it's fair, but yeah, we, we don't have any army for this. We barely have enough front for this stuff. So, I'm gonna to have to do some funky stuff off screen. And here we are at, everybody, in which I don't remember we read uh, about mass mechanization, but what became obvious to some ponies after the failed changing invasion of 1002 didn't caught up with the question's top brass. The armed force remained primitive in terms of adopting mechanized vehicles as means of transporting soldiers. Fortunately, our empress is far more adept at waging war, and she has demanded a program of intense modernization to ensure the supremacy of the knight, and roll up the... Motilda. Most invulnerable to all small arms, a contemporary tank's mobile engine of destruction and firepower. The properly supported, that is. Having shown the prowess and versatility ahead, or already, it's expected that armed mechanized vehicles will soon form a part of every army there is. We must be assiduous in implementing this new weapon. Yeah. Industrial mobilization. Ooh, that would be bad too. Let's do this one. The legions come again. Soldiers fly more efficiently if they're led to believe that they're emulating centuries of pride and martial tradition. The army today might not be ideal successors of nightmare legions of yore, but we can still reinstate what it once was. Furthermore, knowing that there's a higher chance, uh, higher cause to devote towards more opponents who join the battle. But I'll be honest, I use cons commands. This is ridiculous. There's no way. I mean, we could, 
Us versus Equestria, that's fine. We can hold each other off. I mean, as you can tell, we can. But I, I couldn't fight another 15 to 20 divisions from a completely different front. So basically, I'd use Consequence to delete the army divisions because there's, there's no way we could hold. Like, we could barely hold with... We could barely hold, you know, with Equestria. But against an extra 15 to 20 divisions up here, it doesn't matter how strong they are. Because we have, like, 9 divisions here. And we need every soldier in the front to hold a line. But basically, I just delete the divisions. There's nothing you can do. And I apologize for that, but, like, I'm sure someone could do it really well. I'm not an expert at Hoi 4, but, like, Jesus Christ. There's nothing we can do, and it's not the dead fault. It's just the way the AI chose its uh, path this time. But, yeah, this is not possible. At least in my opinion, I can't, I can't do this. Fighting extra 20 divisions with 9... So, I apologize for using cons commands and kind of ruining the Civil War, because this is my first time actually doing this. But, I'm not going to play something where it's basically impossible to win. And I, I, I got tired of, I'm tired of ca campaigns where you just can't win, or just so stacked against you that's not fun. So, I apologize for using cons commands, but it is what it is. I mean, I, I didn't realize that, I kind of figured that Stalingrad could probably join the war against us, but, I mean... What what, what what can we do? They have militia, just because I deleted them. The actual divisions probably would be a lot better. So, like, not fun. Not fun. And also, I delete all the divisions at Equestria Center here because there's no way we can fight that up here as well. Are you kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? So, I apologize. Like, this sucks. I, I wanted a fair, normal fight. But the AI is like, nope. So... I really wanted a fair fight like normal. But, you know what? It sucks. And they spam out division. The AI cheats anyways. I mean, they, they literally cheat. I should be coming right there. Can you do anything there? Can you, how about you force it? You're going to die anyways. You might as well just force it. Even right now. I mean, we're struggling against these guys with just like seven divisions over here. It's ridiculous. You go here, go here, go here. But that's what you get for playing on AS Oracle. You're gonna die anyways. You might as well just do that. That's so stupid. Look at that. I mean, we're still struggling up here. That's so stupid. How can you not see exactly? Ah, because they have your superiority. See, that's why we can't. We had we had to use cons commands for this crap. That's so unfair. And they're still coming in. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. So now I don't feel bad at all about doing this. So. Oh well. I'll probably do the Civil War again sometime, but I'm not sure when. This capital's cut off. Nope, it was. Are you flipping kidding me? Legion's coming again, though. And the Imperial Continental Command. Let's do that one first. It's not a question of where and why to wage war, but rather when and how. To cheat. If success on an operational strategical level, high command must set forth guidelines for commanders in the field to adhere towards. <clears throat> Once a promising tactic is found, <clears throat> excuse me, we can commence elaborating on it for, for, for further results. Man, I need to go to the doctor or something. Holy crap. We lost more divisions. I mean, yeah, I mean, this is why we had to cheat. It's not, it's just not possible. These guys are way too tanky, and I don't understand why. Our divisions just suck. This whole, like, the whole thing we got with more attack meant nothing. It literally meant nothing. 7.5% is not enough to do anything. Sort of laths, lathes. They died. Grab some of that because you can. Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest. I might have to cheat again. Because this is... this is. I, I'm not sure what to say anymore. But this is not good. Obviously, the question is going to fall, but still... Like, even after deleting the divisions, it's still not enough. Like, holy crap. I know this is mountains all, but come on, man. I mean, they're just so strong. Lunar Empire is not fun to play. <laughs> so far. So far. I mean, after this, it's probably going to be really good, but like... Jesus Christ. Acquire weaponry, emergency conversions, and act war plans. Might as well. I mean, look at that. Two divisions. I mean, I guess the guys are not very strong, but still. Who else? Buffalo Chieftain? Are you kidding me, bro? Southern States, Buffalo Chieftain. That's nice, isn't it? 
Um, guys, the faster you take these guys out, the better for everybody. Yeah, we just... I don't know. This has just not been... This is not... This is not bad. It's not bad. It's just not as enjoyable as I hoped it would be. So this is not fun over here. Actually, can we do anything over here? Tip of the spear. State serves the military. That would make sense for us. Um, design costs. Supply penalties. We have a lot of supply penalties. This would not be bad either, but it's all late for that. Logistical focus. Victory or death. Flexible organization. Reserve officers. Fuel consumption. It's not really a problem right now. Uh, let's get the next level. I mean, look at this. This is ridiculous. Army Night Guard Experts. That's not bad. Lunar Logistics Department. I like that too. Ooh, Army Expedient. No, Army Service Registry Agency. Celestia is full fool and a coward didn't realize the value of standing army. Preferring to believe her pamper bodyguard force would suffice. The Night Prince should not be repeating the mistakes of the past, giving the order to increase the number of ponies we need to be hired for the tour of duty, as well as demanding increased training standards overall. Going just to stop the flood. I mean, it's ridiculous. Minneapolis, well, that needs to be cut off too. And you're gonna force the attack. Because our divisions are vastly inferior. For some reason. Like, for some un god awful reason. Daybreaker ascends. Wait, what? Now we're. <laughs> what? Uh, I still have uh, not console commands, but parallel peace conferences on. What the heck? Are we are we really at peace with them? Are you kidding me? Like, bro. What the heck is No, we're so war with them? Are we war or are we not? Like, Jesus Christ, this is weird. What the heck are we supposed to do? I, I, uh, what? <laughs> I'm going back to war with these guys. Screw it. You want to go to war with us? Are you kidding me? So I apologize for you. I don't. I don't feel bad about using. Oh, if you want this, please go ahead. Consequence at all. Like this is. It's not great, and it's not the devs' fault. It's just the way. Like I said, the, the way the AI's been doing stuff. But Jesus, this is not great. <clears throat> the end of the Civil War, I guess. Victory to the nightmare. At a century's hidden in the darkness, her majesty is turned in fire and blood. Her chosen people, having bided their time, even as we were treated as the lesser by the supposedly friendly solarists, rose to stand by her. They fought and they bled, and that through the grim determination and heart and ferocity, victory was theirs. History is written today as in the month of June in 1009, the solarist stranglehold on Equestria was finally broken, and the rightful empress of these lands was restored to the throne denied her a thousand years ago. From receipt of power in Manhattan, the empress of the lunar empire, Nightmare Moon, is addressed her new subjects. Her words delivered across all channels of media were brief, but the meaning is not lost on a single pony. Twelve ponies of the land of Equestria. My subjects, the reign of my feeble, hypocritical sisters, end in henceforth. The night shall reign eternal. The age that awaits you will be a greater, more glorious than one of these lands have seen in a thousand years and more, and all those who bow shall take par partake in the greatness that awaits. To all those of you who would dare to presume my, to question my rule, I have but one thing to tell you. You will not succeed and you will be broken. As my sister's weakness showed, forgiveness only strengthens her enemies, uh, your enemies. I will not make that mistake, but I will shield my empire by whatever means necessary. You will choose if you bow to and serve your empress in shielding these lands, or if you wish to become yet another enemy broken beneath me. For those who hold on in fear as my armies march across the empire, however, I assure you that you have nothing to fear. Your empress can show mercy, and all I ask is that you give me the submission you gave to my sister. Do this, and you will have no reason to fear me. Enemies circle the empire, and I will not pass away for them to come to us. Serve me in this and beyond, and you will have proven your worth. Long live the Empress. Oh, good God. Yeah, that was not enjoyable, as I've said repeatedly in this episode, but, like, I want to kill Stalin Gradient. Stalin Gradient. This was, that was complete crap. Complete crap. That was not cool at all. I want them dead now. Like, this is ridiculous. Cancel war plans. We'll probably need to do that. Um... Yeah, Jesus Christ. Not fun on that part. Um, let's see. I want I want to go to war now. <laughs> Again. Obviously we can't, but like, Jesus. The Empire secured. Empire triumphant. Um it's not gonna do any yet. I'm getting better. Create the IBS? Okay. 
The question of banking system is in disarray after the war. Because loans and monetary services are so vital to the health of the economy, we must step in and restructure the banks. The Imperial Bank and Service shall be founded acting as a national bank and managing regional banks. With this, we hope to restore some sort of order and make loans straightforward to the choir. Movies, movies, movies. Uh, so much. Oh, we gotta cancel that, but we need civvies and stuff like that. As part of the country's reconstruction efforts, today the Lunar Government was proud to announce the reopening of the studio, uh, film studios in Applewood, on the west coast of the Empire. Regardless of the center of the modern arts before the war, Lunar Government is doing its best to help the theatrical arts claim the title. Today across the Empire, one of the major studios, Warner Colts Pictures, puts out a large-scale advertisement on a campaign looking to hire new actors, writers, and film staff in preparation for a grand reopening next year. Already one of the studio's directors, Flynn Moonflowers announced a film that she plans on creating based on exploits of a heroic squad of bat ponies in Manhattan idealists during the Civil War, who began in each other's throats, but by the war's end were one of the finest teams of soldiers serving the Empire. A plan on staying as faithful as possible to the original source material, Flower went on record to say. So I've been in constant and frequent contact with the surviving members of the squad, all in all. I cannot wait to see this dream become reality. And for a new era of film to become part of a corner of the world moving forward. Another reason to go to the movies again. I apologize for the amount of complaining I've done so far. Yeah. I don't like complaining in my videos, but, you know, I do often. Yeah, we're not, we gotta wait for that. Um, IBS. Internal bowel system? No. Irritable bowel system. Syndrome? System? Whatever it is. How long will that take to do as well? 28? Oh, God. Well, I guess you are training, so it won't even matter as much. So, put this down further. We still get 0.86, which is not bad. Traditions. Screw these guys. I... what else do we have? The Empire Triumphant. We still have a lot we can do down here, which is not bad. I like it. We don't really need it now. Hopefully we can do all these eventually as well, because this looks really great. And this wave of steel. Oh, good god. Quality over quantity. Huh. Well, we've got a lot to do. But my god, I want to kill these people so badly. Industrial Heartland? Yeah. The Eastern Coast of Questions for centuries have been one of the most developed parts of the nation, especially after industrialization took place. This means we have a strong economic core. Most are safe from the ravages of war, which should use its production capability to develop lesser other developed regions, as well as expand pre-existing facilities. Uh, what else do we have here? No template for towed anti-air. Uh, that would be good as well. Oh, do we actually have military factors now? I'm sorry, I'm going to complain a lot, probably. Apologies. I know we couldn't do anything there, but like... We're going to need some anti-tank as well. We definitely will need some anti-tank, especially against, uh, changelings. So. Actually, can we do anything down here? Can we help them out, maybe? Got some war plans. I want to get improved working conditions. We're still in war economy, which is not great, but not this. We're still pretty good to do. Um, I want more political power. Can we see any volunteers? Three. Nice. Well, at least we still get a war. Go to war somewhat. Yeah, you guys go here. Um... Come back over here and become. Oh, we can't become that. That sucks. You know what? You three. There you go. Let's do that. Go back. All right. Thanks. We lost a couple of divisions here and there, but whatever. Um, I mean, you guys are only twelve combat with. Can I make your combat with any bigger? Oh, you're sixteen combat with. Oh, oh, you're the big ones, maybe. There you go. These guys are the festival divisions, which are twelve. Uh, volunteers, National Guards, um, Royal Guards, you know what? We can't take that off yet. Dang it. Uh, Night Guards. Back inside Divisions. Make you bigger? Yeah, I'll send you three. There you go. If AI wants to cheat, we gotta cheat as well. Let's see, only 20, huh? Well, I don't think we really have any planes, do we? Bombers? Yeah, we don't have that many planes. Um, here. Go. Set it for five now. And with these extra... Well, you know what's good. Just go to 20. IPS. Minor projects. Cover the shortage, which would be good to do as well, but that's okay for now. Industrial Heartland. Yes. Trade with Skyfall, improve working conditions. Oh, we are on limited conscription, which is not bad. But yeah, we don't need that stuff. So. So shipyards, railways wouldn't be bad either. Knowledge. Oh, land auction cost goes down. Which you can wait for now. Revive the EEA. Oh, that's pretty good right there, too. Nice. Prospect for resources. Empress demands more guns. Well, faith and industrialists. 
railways, naval bases. Well, we're up in the school for gifted unicorns. So let's just school for gifted unicorns. So the question is premier educational institution for magically talented ponies. There's no reason why Empress shouldn't become the new patron of the facility. The damage from war will be repaired and be reopened, welcoming promising pupils into its halls. Perhaps our Empress can even find a protege among them. Yes. Um, you know what? We can get someone else here. Echo. When it blossom. Organization goes down. More experience from a recon, huh? Well, who's got the most attack? Pony. Pony should be aggressive. Pony should be very aggressive against these scum. Looks like there's best supply around here, so let's come down here first. Alright, 1009. Get some better planes. And you guys are going to be on high priority? Yes, please. Go in. You guys focus on these guys here. Get some organization. Or just go in, I guess. There you go. There you go. Nice. Keep building, keep building, keep building. We'll never be done building. Never. I love being a cult leader. Seven A. Hello, what is this? Or what? Why do we get? We were never told about border conflicts. Do I need to put my soldiers down here instead? Oh, disaster. Awful news. The forces of Confederate Southern states have been able to drive troops from the contested territory. Southern troops are quelling dissent in the area, and the Southern diplomatic officers declare this a merely temporary occupation to defend the lives of local residents. As if anyone would believe these lies. Well, are you kidding me? What the heck? We weren't told about this at all. Are you? What the heck? Man, this, this campaign is being something else right now. Like, what the heck is going on? I don't play enough equestrian war to really know what's going on here, so... Looks like I know who to beat up next. Uh, academic militarism. For some reason, Celestia never set up any uh, mandatory military education in academia, contributing to crippling military weakness. With Empress's patronage, national universities can open new courses for all students teaching basic military theory. Some of students will hopefully one day become gifted theorists and innovating new strategies for the army to use. And successful defense. Soldiers cross our border from the Confederation of Southern States recently tried to capture territory from us. Thankfully, our army was able to easily throw them back. A Southern foreign office is saying, Silent on the matter, but it's been cause for celebration among the people, especially among the military. Success? Well, finally success. Jesus Christ, that's dumb. We didn't get told jack squat of what was going on. What the heck? Just happens all of a sudden? Alright, so with that, we're going to actually make you a little bigger with artillery. Support artillery. There you go. It's nice. Uh, better artillery. Thing here now it's quite a bit ahead of time 1009 that's all ahead of time it's fine entrenchment for them uh you know what get some pick a side better fire is good good it's very good nice Um, last Pegasus. Oh, all right. Cover the shortage. No, how can we do this one? With celestial, oh, the celestial resistance is shambles, and the banishment of our most hated foes. Now this guy can truly shine wide across Questria. No time to rest, however, the victory is in set in stone. Points all across Questria must be brought back to heal, uh, to heed the words of the Empress to establish the night that never ends. Okay, so I guess we'll get it done eventually. Is there something with our focuses? War two. Is this glitched? Because the war is over now. If we have a war plan. This is... Is this glitched? Or maybe... Is it not? Do I have to cancel the war plan to do it? 
I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything else I can do about this, because this doesn't seem very good for us, so... What's for here? Might as well do that, why not? This blueprints, while our nation has been landlocked for a long time, there is an acquisition of dockyards and other shipbuilding facilities will also gain various blueprints and technological documents. It kicks our own navy. Eh, it's not really worth it for us. Expand the shipyards, maybe? Eh, new mining projects. There's always a demand for more raw resources, especially in the military sector of our industry. The question surveyors have already identified many promising deposits, but they cannot be exploited before the war began. By securing control of these areas, we can send our miners to work, increasing the resource supply needed for economic production. Endless Moon Celebration. Okay. Praise the Night. Following the violent takeover by the Nightmare Moon and the Thestrial Allies, uh, she was quick to eliminate dissent and establish her own tradition, centered around the celebration, celebration of night. Bad ponies and the new rule. The apex of these is an Endless Moon Celebration, commemorating the longest night of the year and her victory over her now banished sister, held in Canterlot. The event has attracted the Empress's zealous followers and soldiers, with some ponies being pressed, ganged, and attending. Usurping her sister's ceremonial dials, or dies. The Empress did not waste, or did not appear to be bothered by the frigid cold, which couldn't be said for the crowd. She went on to deliver a passionate speech about the new authority in Equestrian, in which the night will never again be ignored and put aside, despite the dour tone of the celebration. Nightmare Moon did not fail to showcase the grandeur of the night, the ponies being inspired by the glory of the moon and the stars. Praise the night. Did that do anything? No. That did nothing. What are we supposed to do now? I guess just kill everybody down here as best we can. <clears throat> Good force attack, but now I'm gonna do that for now. All right, so up next, oh, selling meals only five percent, which is okay. Uh, consumer goods are probably better to do. Selling meal five percent more. Air force it. Wow, some sick up. 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 Develop science base is nice. Create this one? No, cover the shortages probably. Despite a question's industrial size, there remains a need for crucial resources such as oil and rubber. Although there are plentiful natural resources and deposits, they are typically located in areas where infrastructure is underdeveloped, making exploitation much such, of such difficult. For the time being, we must rely on artificial synthesis of oil and rubber. Oh, it's 10-10 now, huh. Alright, well, cool. You're gonna hurt consumer goods a little bit, but you know what? We need more stability to help offset that. Nice. Ten ten. Right, but do we actually have anything here? Nope. Not very much. Selenite falls ill. Many projects. Cover the shortages. The Empress demands more guns. In the darkness of the night, the warm glow of vast forges bathes their cities in dim light, endlessly churning out weapons for the army. Yet it's not enough. More those need to supply numerous soldiers, and we will have more new factories will be built to satisfy our demand. As it should. Good. 10 10. Yell Rectorate. Go here. If you can win here, you can circle two more divisions, which would be great. For resources. Oh, that's actually really good. Nice. Really bad right here, huh? Gonna shut stuff up as well. Better already, nice. Oh, you guys are ding dongs. There we go. Nice. Oh. Artillery right there. Did I get rid of. No, that's a tank.
Uh, well, get rid of that one. It's bringing a lot of already. Are we missing any resources? Aluminum and rubber. Pretty normal. I'm gonna grab that one. We need it, so. Fade the industrialist. Of course, you have many wealthy capitals and business points who remain loyal to the Celestia during the war, funding your armies and fueling the economy. Now, that should be all brought before the Empress to be judged. If the vast possessions could be confiscated by the Empire, they could be given another chance and allowed to cooperate with the Empress. Soon it shall be decided. Just grind as much as you can. Force attack, we'll force attack too. Oh. Okay. A scum sucker wanted to be here, huh? Not much, but it's probably not honestly worth it at all, but whatever. Nice. Um, there's a lot of rivers here too, but whatever. Fate of the industrialists. Um, create the IM and DS. To direct our mining operations, the Imperial Mining and Drilling Service shall be established, comprised of experienced engineers, uh, geologists, surveyors, managers, and others. Though sure quotas are met, and that the economy remains well supplied with raw materials. As it should. And a couple more probably magical crypto machines. Encryption and decryption requires ever increasing amounts of processing power, which cannot be provided by sharp minds alone. By using crystals for storing and handling binary data, we can create rudimentary machines capable of completing complex algorithms needed by various methods of cryptology. Let's ever sure receive imperial patronage. And we can't do this one yet, but uh, this one? Of course, all the following. I guess I'm Imperial Majesty's railway system. Celestia neglected the infrastructure of many question regions, but her empress is better than that. She's already commissioned a grand project to expand the railroad network across the entire country, going to even more isolated settlements. Another settlement needs your help. Wait a second. Tripartite Union? Nice, right, anything here? Infantry? I'm not sure. I guess it's considered infantry or not. Let me know in the comments below because I'm not sure if they are. I don't think so, but still. Fate of the industrialists. Numerous magnates, CEOs, managers, bosses, and so on were brought before the Empress. Once they had worn fancy clothing befitting of their high ranking positions, but now they're a bear and made a kneel before their mistress. Yet their mistress was not necessarily a cruel one, especially when she could benefit from benevolence. While they had aided her treacherous or older sibling during the war, perhaps they could be redeemed. The company they owned employed many talented workers and owned many facilities, after all, which could benefit the Lunar Empire greatly. Of course, on the other hoof, the companies could simply be dissolved and their assets confiscated, and the industrials themselves be thrown into the deepest dungeons, but without the skill and exp experience of the concerns of the facilities can be utilized to their full potential. What's the decision? Let them uh, be of some use to us? The assets shall be seized. Uh, that's not bad. Uh, wow. What do we currently have here? It's uh, not... Terrible. Uh, it's not great. Uh, I would prefer to know the asset shall be seized. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow as you'll see what else we can do in the Lunar Empire. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.